Welcome to the Barry. Kookaburra. I guess I just love the Barry. We're lucky we've got some great waves around here. The fishing's good. and I don't know, when you kind of grow up just in the, in the desert, it's sort of in your blood and you sort of get used to that and, you know, going to different spots. They're fun for a little bit, but I just seem to always love coming back to the desert and just the whole desert vibe. And, you know, we all got a pretty tight-knit community around here, especially the surfers, and that's why I love the Barry, I guess. I still love travelling and, and getting out, and that's the sort of thing about this joint. You need to sort of get out every now and then and go travel and do some things, and then, you know, you come home and you really appreciate it more. So you kick back, have a few tins and go fishing, or else, you know, if there's no swelling, it's Nice day, we'll take the boats out and go fishing out at sea, diving, just... You pretty much just got to make your own fun around here because fucking... Yeah, there's, there ain't a whole heap going on, so unless you're willing to get off your ass and do something, you're going to be sitting at home pretty bored, I guess. Yeah, when I was born, or when I first started surfing, I was a natural footer, and the old boy said this is the land of the left, so you might as well change to a goofy foot grom, and I just went, oh, fuck, that makes sense, so... I did it. <laughs> This is the pub. I've actually never been in there. Would you believe it? <laughs> That's the pub. It's not bad. Good feed, you know. The best coffee shop, cafe. Well, we got gorges down near the jetty here. They pump out a good feed, good for lunch and, you know, good coffees and that. And then in the last few years, we got the little coffee van down the point, which is pretty epic, you know. You wake up, you go for a surf check. It's always cold, you feel like a coffee you got, they pumped out of hell coffee, fucking Bob's your uncle, you're on, it's a good way to start the day, so. Being bloody sick, having Breno and Haz up here, I've been telling Breno to come here for years, mate, little prick hasn't come and visit me, but, uh, hey Brent. <laughs> hey, fuck, it's 20 bloody years, <laughs> years mate. Doctor is not one of the old boys that's been here forever surfing and you know he used to run these little grommet comps for us and stuff like that so good old genuine local bloke that's been around the trap for a while so there we are. What's going on? Oh, it's crazy. How are you mate? I reckon the late 80s early 90s was the best for surfing around here. Really good clean swells. I dragged a few photos out. You get back up swells it'd be six to eight foot two days you drop, then you get down to six foot, but then you go, go out the next day, boom, it's back up. You need to hear everyone going, oh, you're just you blokes are getting off, when you hear a saying like, fuck, you know, it's, it's not as good as it used to be. It, it definitely isn't. This is old Les here, and this one, he recently passed away. Um, 
he, he shaped a lot of his first boards and everything like that. He's an old legend. I remember one time you were drifting off a bit. You've been surfing, right? You little kid. Nah, I've been going fishing. <laughs> Vicious. Yeah, the kids one was just me and Les and a couple other guys would sort of run these little comps for them. I, I think I won one of them. Everyone was going right and you do a few turns, you'd get an eight or something. I think I pulled into a close out left and you just give me a turn. Just yeah, yeah. We were there. born in a weather board with the fly screen on the Uh, working with the old boys, epic, you know, because obviously surf for a living for a long time, and that, that was epic. And now, um, you know, now that I'm sort of working for a living, I'm, I'm doing it with the old boy. He's teaching me everything I know, like as far as fishing and that goes. And it's been pretty epic. Now he's, he's sort of giving me the reins of the boat to take it out without him on board. So feeling a bit of pressure doing that, Captain Rive. Oh, I'm stoked Dad's giving me the opportunity and. You know, I just look at me old boy, he's like one of me fucking good mates, you know. We work together, surf together, and yeah, he's getting on now. What is he, 63, 64, and the old boy has a crack, eh? Oh, yeah. Trippy sunrise this morning, it's like pink. Yeah. Cheers, boys. Yeah. How yeah, good the shack, eh? We used to do the shack. Me and Cody's older brother and, and Liam and Charlotte's older brother, uh, Mason, and our good family friend, Chatty, were out prawn fishing out of um, Point Sampson in Nickel Bay, and their boat flipped, and they were both lost at sea, and we never found them. So we made this in memory of them, and. It's a good spot to come down and reminisce and think about them. I think about them every day. And it just takes the whole community to sort of make it yeah. to make it what it is, you know. And we all donated and we all put our own time and effort into it. And pretty amazing thing, you know. I'm just come driving over the Monara Hill and just going, how good is this? Like just like the Arvo glass <laughs> off, watching perfect lefts roll through. You couldn't ask for anything more. Eh? Yeah, once you've been away for a while, mate. Yeah. Once you've been away, and then you go, you come back. Just good, honest living. That's what the barrier is, mate.